Hello, and welcome to the recording of end of month for the US in Saluno. In this recording, we'll take a look at how to process your end of month and eventually your end of fiscal year in the Saluno software. So let's go ahead and get started. After you've done your bank rec, one of the things you eventually want to do is close out your month. By closing out your month, that'll prevent people from backdating entries that could affect your financial reports. So before you close out your month, you should run your financial reports. In the main toolbar, click on the financials icon. Here you'll find your general ledger report, your balance sheet, your trial balance, and your profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement. Even though you probably have a bookkeeper or an accountant who goes through these reports for you, since this is normally your business, you should also keep an eye on these reports just to make sure there's nothing going on financially responsible at the firm. So under the general ledger, just take a look at the individual GL accounts. Make sure the numbers look right to you or see if there's any accounts that you don't understand why they're here or why there's a debit or credit to it. The balance sheet. Just look to make sure that your assets are equaling your liabilities and equity. See if there's any weird numbers that you don't recognize in this report. Um, negative numbers can also be a bad sign depending on which account it is. And the trial bail, your debits and your credits should equal. Again, another bird's eye view of your GL accounts to see if anything's out of the ordinary. And of course, your income statement, whether you're losing or making money. So it looks like in 2022, I actually lost uh, 650 bucks. So I may want to go in and take a look at what's going on. So do every month review your four financial statements to see if there's anything just that doesn't look right to you and then bring that up to your bookkeeper accountant for them to discuss it with you as to what's happening. Also make sure you're doing your bank reconciliations and if you haven't already, please check out the video on how to do the bank reconciliation. Then when you're ready to close your period, you can go to the close period tab in the financials. On this tab, the end of the period is always the end of your fiscal year. So that date should be the end of your current fiscal year. In my set of books, I close on a calendar year. So that's why it's December 31st. If you don't close on a calendar year, just make sure this is your closing date for your fiscal year. If you would like to see previous closed periods, then down below, just expand out previous periods. So far, I'm closed through October 2022. So now I'm ready to close out November. So to close out November, I'm going to change this to reflect my November date. I do not check this box because I'm not closing out my fiscal year. I'm just closing out the month of November and then click Submit. Now this may take some time to run. So while that's running, feel free to do other things in the software. You can work on data entry, on your contacts and files, whatever you like to do while it's closing out the month. And then just remember to go back to your financials and you can expand out and we can see November is now closed. And I know it's closed because I see my five financial reports. We are gonna generate a general ledger report, a detailed general ledger, a balance sheet, a trial bail, and your income statement. And these will be dated for that closed period. So I close the month of November. If I click on one of these reports to review it, we will see. It is dated November 1st through November 30th. Now, 
I recommend you close on a month by month basis, but Solano does not require you to close month by month. You can close by quarter, you can close semi-annually, or you can just close a year all at once. It's totally up to you. Keeping in mind that the time frame you close is what will be the dates on the reports that are generated for that closed period. So now I've closed out November. I'm getting close to the end of my year. So before you close out your year, your accountant or bookkeeper may need you to make some manual journal entries. Now the transactions that you perform in Saluno normally create your general ledger entries for you. But there are certain entries that we just don't have a transaction for. For example, depreciation entries. So if you need to make a manual journal entry, which is not uncommon, you go to the journal entry tab. Put in the date that journal entry should take effect. Since I'm closing out 2022, I'm gonna date this back in December of 2022. You can add a reference if you like, but we do require a memo. So in this case, I will call these depreciation entries for end of 2022. Generally, your account will give you the entries they want you to make, and they'll probably give you the GL account, or they might even give you the description, so you can type in either one to find the entry and select those GL accounts. Now just put in the debits and credits as dictated by the bookkeeper or accountant. Now we are gonna follow standard accounting procedures here, which means your debits and your credits have to equal. If they don't, your transaction's out of balance, so that way we will not allow you to save it. So the save button in the bottom left will be grayed out. We will not allow you to save an out of balance transaction. We'll show you the debits and the credits here and we can see I'm out $100, which I did purposely to show you that you wouldn't accidentally put in an out of balance transaction. Now I'm just doing depreciation entries. If you wanna do more entries, you can. You do have the explanation here where you can add details about each line item if necessary. That's totally up to you and your bookkeeper. Once you're done, just click save to save your journal entries. Now, if your bookkeeper gives you the journal entries as a CSV file, we can actually import your journal entries here in the bottom right. If you're having trouble importing the entries, feel free to contact support and we'll verify that the CSV file is set up properly to import the transactions in. Now, what may happen is you go to make a journal entry. And I will just do this as transfer funds. I'm going to move money from my operating account to my other operating account, which is my petty cash account. I'm going to move $5,000. And I'll even put a note. Replenish. I'm in balance. I have two different accounts. Save button's available. I click save. And then I get this warning. You have chosen a special control GL account for this entry. Continuing may cause a discrepancy. What this message is telling you is that if you continue to post this entry, we will update the general ledger. But we're not gonna update the journal. In this case, your bank journals. So if you try to reconcile your general ledger versus your bank journal, 
they're no longer going to reconcile and they will not ever reconcile again. So if you see this message, the best thing to do is cancel out. And if you're not sure what to do to enter this entry, then by all means, contact support. If I continue with this entry, acknowledge and override it, what's going to happen is if I run my general ledger, run it through today and I'll run it for that operating account too. And if I compare that while it's running to my bank account for account two, here, the balance of this account is $3,100. If I look at my financials, this says $8,100, a difference of the $5,000 transaction I made. So that's why when that message pops up, it's a good idea to cancel out because you are throwing your reports out of balance. Now, if you've done this in the past or accidentally did it and weren't sure what was about to happen, and now you need to get rid of that entry, and you can go to your general journal. Your general journal is where you store all the manual journal entries that you've made. So I will go ahead and rerun this. So there's the depreciation entry I made earlier, which was fine. Those were not control accounts. But here's the transfer of funds that messed up my general ledger versus my operating account. So now all I have to do is delete that journal entry. Now, if I go back to my general ledger and I refresh it and I go to my reports and I refresh that back to 3,100 here, back to 3,100 here and both reports are now the same. If I really needed to do that transaction, I would of course go to add entries, do a transfer, and then I could transfer the 5,000 from the operating to the operating to, which is petty cash, save it. Now both reports will be correct. It should increase by 5,000. I refresh. It's now 8,100. I go to my financials, my general ledger, refresh. This takes a little bit longer because there's more data it has to go through to run the general ledger. And now that's also $8,100. So, are journal entries necessary from time to time? Yes, they are. Just be very careful what general ledger accounts you select. And if that message pops up about a control account, pause, see if there's a transaction that'll better make that change. Or if you're not sure what to do, please contact support. So now we're getting ready to close our fiscal year. Generally, there is one more thing we have to do in the US before we can close out our fiscal year, and that's generate the 1099 data that we need to send to the IRS. So Saluno does support the printing of 1099 forms. We don't print the form itself, but we do print directly on the 1099 form so that you can print that data on the form and send it in. So to generate your 1099s, first, make sure you've got your vendor set up. So as you add vendors in the system under contacts, as you add them in under the vendor info, they should be set to vendor. Then what we need to do is if we needed to, if you had a balance forward on that particular vendor when you started Saluno, we need to know what you've already paid. 
And then which form are you printing on? The NEC form or the MISC form? The NEC form generally for independent contractors, MISC form for all your other vendors that need a 1099. And then just make sure that green box is ticked for those vendors that actually need the 1099 at the end of the year. Once you're ready to generate the 1099 data to print on the form, go to Views and Reports, go to Payables, and under Payables, you will have the 1099 forms. So pull out the forms you need to print on, and then we can generate the data for the forms. So in the orange, choose active, click the down arrow, select the view, in this case, the 1099 listing, put in your date range, we'll do last year, because I should have some data there. Now, I'm going to run it for all vendors, so I leave vendor blank, but you could run it for a specific vendor. And we will default to the IRS threshold of $600. The options you have, if you click ignore 1099 flag, then it will generate a 1099 data sheet for every vendor that meets the threshold, whether or not you told us they needed a 1099 or no. So we'll override that flag that I showed you earlier to mark that a vendor needs a 1099. If you did any trust out entries for the vendor, we can include those in the totals as well. And finally, we need to know which vendors are you generating the forms for, your NEC vendors or your MISC vendors. So we can put the data in the correct format. Once you've got all that set, click play to generate the data. I've got one vendor, it looks like. So now I want to print. So load your 1099 forms in the printer. When you're ready to finalize, at the very bottom, click on the finalize button. That'll generate the data needed. Click finalize. It may take a second or two, but it will then generate the PDF. And it'll be formatted to print on the 1099 form. What you need to be aware of is when you go to click print, normally when we tell you to print PDFs, we tell you to make sure that you see the correct margins, especially for checks, and set it to fit the printable area. But for the 1099 forms, it shouldn't be set to fit the printable area. It should be set to the default scale of your printer. That's what will make sure it prints properly on your 1099 forms. But that is one slight change from when you normally print PDFs is you don't want to fit to printable area. You do want to fit to the default so it prints properly on the 1099 form. And then just print and print all your copies as needed. Once you're done with one set of forms, if you need the other set, then just go back in, choose any C this time, click play, and then here are my vendors that need any C forms. Again, I just click finalize, wait for your PDF to generate, and then here is the data formatted for the NEC form. Same thing as before, load your NEC forms, print, and make sure under settings, it is for the default and not fit the printable area. Because you'll see as I switch between these, the margins slightly change. So make sure it's set to default so it prints properly on the 1099 form.
The other tab that you see, the finalize tab, is where your finalized forms go when you're done. You can reprint from here. I will warn you though, if you do reprint, you'll notice you'll see that PDF there. If I choose each individual PDF, then it's going to only print one vendor per form. So if you can do it from the active tab instead, you'll be able to save paper by putting two vendors on each MISC form or three vendors on each NEC form. Now that we're done with our 1099s, you also wanna make sure that we go back, make your end of year adjustments to the journal entry. And then when you're ready, it's time to close your fiscal year. Go to close period. Again, make sure this is the end of your fiscal year. Tick the box to close the fiscal year. Click submit. Give it some time to close. Again, you can do other things in the product while it's closing. This notification icon should update. Now it's up to two, letting me know it's done. Go back to my financials, previous periods, and I have closed my fiscal year. And now my fiscal year is cycled to my new fiscal year of December, 2023. Again, here you'll have your five financial reports, and now you'll notice the book icon. The book icon are your end of year adjustments that Saluno has made for you. Click the icon, and you can see your end of year adjustments. We've zeroed out your income and expense, and based on your settings, we've updated your retained earnings and your equity account. That is the end of the fiscal year. Now, even if you've closed out your fiscal year, there's always the possibility that you may need to backdate an entry into a closed period. You can reopen previously closed periods and or fiscal years. You'll notice the trash can icon next to each line. So you can delete previous periods. Keeping in mind, the further back you go, we do have to open not only the one you click on, but all the ones that occurred after as well. So I delete this, the November 2022. It'll also delete December and reopen the fiscal year. So I click on delete. It warns you it's gonna have to do both. You go ahead and continue. Tell it, yes, we're making entries. That's why we're reopening it. and it then reopens your fiscal year and the other months that were closed. A word of advice, you can delete any of these that you need to with the exception of the very last line. You notice this last line in the list has no book icon and has no PDF icons. These are your opening balances for Saluno. So if you delete that line, it's gonna reset all of your numbers and financials in Saluno, and it's gonna be a nightmare to try to get all that information entered back in. So never touch the last line in Saluno. So that is the end of the fiscal year. If you ever have any questions or need any help with training, please feel free to email us here at training at saluno.legal. Also, don't forget to visit our website at salono.legal. If you click on the resources tab, there'll be a training hub section. On the training hub, we have our live classes that we offer each month that you can register for. We have the recordings of all those classes in case you can't attend a live session. 
We have micro videos that concentrate on specific topics within Saluno. And we also have our training documentation there as well. With that, we hope you found this video helpful in getting ready to close for the US. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.